Hello and welcome. Uh, for those of you who are regular viewers of the channel, you will recognise I'm here at the barn tonight. I'm just going to do my <coughs> regular chill out with some radio and tonight I'm going to just go through some of the comments, some of the great comments um, you, you send in and I've also got a confession to make so uh, tonight's going to be a bit of radio, some comments and uh, <coughs> confession time. Right, hello there. <clears throat> so uh, I get I get some fantastic comments into the channel. Uh, thank you to everybody that uh, takes the time to um, uh, send it in comments, questions, ideas, tips, uh, and criticisms. You know, it, it's 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 all part of the uh, nature of running a channel. When you do things that are off kilter, um, people can. Um, in a very nice way, respectful way, can can uh, offer you advice when you do things wrong, and it's great. I, I really enjoy that. I try and get around to um, at least responding to every question, whether it's just um, to acknowledge it or to say thank you or to respond and have a conversation. and And I've noticed there's quite a few regular. Um, subscribers, regular visitors to the channel that engage in some of the new people to the channel in the threads on the comments. So, thank you, thank you very much to everybody that um, is a regular a contributor to the channel. Uh, I've got a few questions uh, that I've downloaded. Like I said before, I don't get any internet here, and I quite like that they, they're being off grid. Uh, so I have to sort of download them. So you have to just bear with me when I try and read these off a smaller screen. Um, this is a question from Mar Martin Salt, um, and this is responding to, um, I think I did a review here. I've used the um, M1 ECC Slidewinder, the coil, on a number of videos, and I've noticed a number of other uh, ham radio channels have started to use the co that same coil as well. Um, really, really nicely made, nicely designed coil. Uh, just seen this video call uh, very nicely done thanks uh, i bought a wrc silver bullet uh, wolf river coil uh, silver bullet mini coil about two years ago um is it worth me buying the slide winder or will the performance be very similar i don't have any issues with moving the collar on the wolf river coil yeah because I, I i i just struggled with the moving adjusting the coil Maybe because I wasn't doing it right, probably. But um, I, I've just answered that. Can you have too many coils? Um, I I don't know if there is a difference. I suppose there is, to a degree, between certain manufacturers if they're focusing on um, a wider portion of the band or certain bands. Um, so. I, and I guess it depends on the, the, the tightness of the coils. I suppose the physical dimensions of the coil will play a difference. I don't know if there's a difference between the Wolf River coil that I've got and the slide winder, apart from um, the experience of, of adjusting it. Um, the thing, <clears throat> I suppose the good thing about having multiple coils is that you can experiment. I guess you could build dipoles, you could do like an owl shaped antenna. We have one going up and then one being the counterpoise, adjustable counterpoise, um, ground plane counterpoise. Uh, so you can't have too many of them. Um, and I think, yeah, no, I, I think it's worth, if you have the spare dollars or spare pennies, um, getting, it, getting it, another, another coil in, gives you more to play with, I guess. Um, Oh, this is a question about actually my. I'm, I'm not. I'm not the best um, film maker. Um, I do a sort of I do a rough, rough cut blog. Uh, I do try and add a little bit of creativity to my um, video, the filmmaking. Um, so I'm not an expert, but uh, what do you use to edit your videos? I'm going to start a YouTube channel. This is um, um, M0KNM, um, nice chap. 
uh, what do you use to um, edit your videos? Um, he wants to you know, start doing some YouTube stuff as well. And I use Final Cut, Cut Pro because um, I tend to do most of my creative stuff on the Mac. So I, 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 I do music stuff as well, really poorly, but I, I, I do lots of improvised electronic music. Uh, so I've always used a Mac because it just, the workflow, the the way that it works with um, external gear uh, seems to me to be a much easier workflow. So I use a Mac, uh, so I use a Final Cut Pro. I have started to use Adobe Rush a little bit as well so I can get a little bit, do a little bit on the phone and then pick it up on, on the computer and carry on. So there is there, it does synchronise between the phone and the computer. So Adobe Rush Pro, or sorry, Adobe Rush I use for some sort of easier stuff. Some of the videos on my Instagram channel, I've got an Instagram channel. Uh, on the Instagram channel, I've done some of the editing through the Rush, but mostly is um, Final Cut. Um, in response to that, uh, Amateur Radio UK, another great um, newish YouTube channel is Amateur Radio UK. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know the chap's name. I do apologise. I've watched a few videos now. Um, he uses Magic's Movie Edit Pro. Um, and he does a lot of like sew to, sew to work and um looking at antennas and, and it started to really pick up on 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 uh, youtube as well worth having a look at um ham radio attitude uh, this is a chap that was just responding to uh and i had quite quite a lot of responses to a previous video where i, w I was just i was just explaining that at times i feel that I'm losing interest with parts of the hobby, part the, parts of the traditional parts of the hobby, i.e. sitting in front of a microphone and making contacts with people and all that kind of stuff. And I've had quite a number of really, really useful um, ideas, comments, people sharing the same um, experiences. So I'll, I'll put, a, hopefully I'll do this, but I'll put a link to that video. It's worth I haven't watching the video of course but the comments below are really useful so if you are if you are struggling yourself with the hobby and running out of ideas maybe it's worth checking out um some of those comments i also had a comment from tech minds uh, so matt from the tech minds youtube channel also popped a um, very useful comment onto that video um his channel is really worth looking at because there's lots of ideas around decoding signals and satellites, really lots of useful things on the TechMinds channel. Um, try asking the contact a question, what rig antenna, uh, what's the weather like, um, etc. Now this is a really, I know, it's, I know it sounds really uh, obvious, but sometimes um, I fall into the habit of, when I, make, when I make a contact on 20 meters, for example, I'm assuming, because I've, I've heard the previous few contacts from that operator, that he wants to move fast through them. So, he, you know, he's going 5859, uh, the name is blah, blah, K okay, 73 bye bye, and move on. Now, I always assume, oh, I don't want to start asking him about how his mother-in-law is and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, you know, how, what sort of antenna and all that kind of stuff. However, I think sometimes the assumption is, is wrong. And I actually I ought to just slow down sometimes because when you start to work out, when somebody gives you a 5.8, is that a 5.8 with a beam? Has he got a beam? Is that 5.8 with the antenna on? Is that 5.8 when he's using a, a hamstick on the back of a car? I think if you are interested in <clears throat> the miracle of, of radio, making those contacts that you, you know you think, have, have I managed that? I've managed to make a contact with somebody in Jamaica on, on a mobile and he was mobile but you wouldn't know that sometimes if you rush the, the contact so actually taking some time and, um, and and just maybe ask a couple of questions or tell them what setup you're, you've got and they'll go through their setup and it, it does actually work um, there's also around teaching yourself CW, and I've had a few people actually mention around um, CW, and 
uh, about three years ago, I was really interested in CW. I thought, right, that's it. I'm going to learn CW. <clears throat> and then I spent a few weeks doing the um, the mobile phone training, doing a little bit of listening, uh, and then it tailed off, and I didn't I didn't carry on. And I guess <clears throat> I guess with CW, it's a bit like the um, it's about the, the motivation cycle. I'm sort of pre-contemplation. I'm sort of like, well, do I really want to do it? Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Then I move into the contemplation stage, right? I'm going to learn how to do CW, but I never really, um, I never really progress past there. So I guess the timing's not right. I guess I've got too many other things going on that uh, attract my attention because I've got all the other hobbies and, and such like, and the family. Maybe the time, maybe it's just timing rather than uh, purely um, my views on CW. That's a cup of tea. Um, <clears throat> so by the time that this video goes out, uh, I should have released two videos that I've currently got in edit at home, and the two videos that have just hopefully come out uh, is me in the truck driving around playing radio and such like. Now. <clears throat> the, what's significant about this is on the first video I make a contact with a local chap on VHF and M7BUE Ian I think it's Ian um, and I was just talking about going to high ground and all that malarkey um, we, we, had a, we had a chat on the radio and, and he explained a new place to try out and uh, which I did in the second video, I went to drive out and try that new place out. Now this, it, in many ways, just that very simple act of having a chat with somebody, having a bit of a rag chew um, about the subject that we both enjoy, because he enjoys getting out in his um, camper van. Actually, um, it, it's, it's times like that that makes you go, actually, ham radio is a good hobby. You can meet people that are like-minded, give you new ideas, uh, give you new things to try out, new places to go. Especially if you if if you're like me that like to do ham radio outdoors more. I love the outdoorsy stuff, you know, mud and grass and rain and radio. Um, so actually, that was um, a nice experience, really. Um, and it's, it's it's things like that that maintains my interest in the hobby. Another comment comment here is, um, and this is this is a, this is an, an interesting question that I don't know the answer to, um, and it's a regular question. Um, how long are your radials, and how do you calculate the length? My answer, like previous times, has always said. Actually, I always refer to Cal's channel, to the DX Commander because he spent a number of videos um, talking at length about the, the history of the, of the debate of um, radials, lengths, how many to put down. Um, I, I don't know is the answer. Um, if, I was, if I was going to guess, I would, for me, I, I would say, well, if I'm going to be working on 80 metres, I'd want to put 80 metres down of radials, but not not in one bit, you know, cut, cut them in a smaller length and spread them out, possibly. Um, also, Tim G5TM, I think Tim might have covered uh, radials on his channel. It's worth uh, just read, just searching through there. Uh, so I don't know is the answer. Um, and I know that uh, radials can create a bit of a bun fight as well, so um, I <clears throat> I'm being cautious on that one. Oh, very good on this moment. Also, too many stations around uh, So I got this from off Amazon. You can get it from anywhere. Just Google them. But it's just a camera case, uh, a nice deep um, DLSR camera case, and it fits the 705 nicely. Really nice into there. Uh, I can also put in the microphone and a few of the cables uh, and this actually fits inside 
the backpack as well so actually it adds and it's not really that heavy I mean, it's got you know, maybe a, a pound or so and <clears throat> however the for the protection it gives and the, the extra weight that you're carrying it is really worth it uh, for the 705 So tonight's tea is it's going to be Mongolian beef. So I'm going to fry some onions down, chuck in some sriracha chili sauce, chuck in the beef, fry that in the chili sauce. I'm going to add a little bit of tomato paste, a bit of garlic, and then I'm going to be chopping a few of these tomatoes in these um, like vine type tomatoes. Chuck in a tiny bit of honey. Uh, some sesame seeds at the end. It's Aberdeen Angus beef. Right. Tomatoes in now. It smells absolutely lovely. Right, so that's done. Chop these into thinnish slices. I'm going to fry them in there and put some paprika in. Shallow fry, <coughs> paprika, bit of salt. That's uh, tea sorted. Okay, so uh, a few videos ago, I uh, did a video where I was using an ICOM 706 and I referred to the, the radio in that video as a classic. <clears throat> I decided to call it classic. I thought, to me, it felt like a classic. Um, however, I've had a couple of comments to say um, that's not a classic. I even had one chap say that it was clickbait the title having the word classic in but the actual picture was of an ICOM 706 so I don't really know how clickbait works in that case is it classic what is a classic radio is there, is there a classification of vintage and classic see I I see the old sort of valve radios and really early Yesu type radios as vintage and I see the um, Yaesu 897 and the 706 Mark 1 as classic but I don't know what is it what what, what would you say is um, vintage and classic what shall we what shall we be looking for is the question confession over Right, good morning. Um just packing up now, um heading back home, back to work. Over the next couple of weeks I've got a new winter tent, four season tent coming and a wood burning stove. So Hopefully, uh, the next video, or maybe the one after, will be the first trip out to uh, test out the tent and the stove, which, uh, which should be fun. So, uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye for now.